No. Does this not cause him who hath none to rise up against his neighbor, who hath an abundance, and take by force that which he requireth to satisfy his hunger? Is this not a cause of misery? Yeah, it is true that when the man took more of the fruits and the plants than that which he needed to sustain himself, he began to feel a temporary joy and a satisfaction that he had an abundance and a security of his future needs. But this temporary joy persuadeth an even greater misery when he turneth away his neighbor and keepeth this abundance for himself. It's like those that have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank. What are you holding on to that money for? What is the point to hold? What is the point to have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank, bruh? You cannot you. It would take you a long time to utilize all that money, you know? You could use that money to help people in need. But yet you're sitting here you're sitting here storing up a treasure on this earth. What is the point of that? You get Bruh, I'm just I'm I want to try not to get on that because um I'm not trying to hurt nobody, okay? But it's just I think so different than my family, okay? Like, if I had a hundred thousand, I would not have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, okay? Because I'd be helping people, you know? <laughs> Bruh, I would not be sitting on that kind of money when there's people around me that's starving. <sighs> and it irks me. It irks me to my deepest core that people are sitting on this kind of money when there's people around them that are needing that money, that are needing this to sustain their life. Verse 54. And if the man gave unto his neighbor of his abundance so that they both were filled, then how great would be the gratitude of one and the satisfaction of the other, knowing that he saved the life of his neighbor, and this joy would never be forgotten, nor would it end. Therefore, and then let me just make a point. That last verse, let me reread that again, okay? This is, this is, Loving thy neighbor as thyself, okay? If the man, if the man gave unto his neighbor of his abundance so that they both were filled, then how great would be the gratitude of one and the satisfaction of the other, knowing that he saved the life of his neighbor, and this joy would never be forgotten, nor would it end. Okay? That's loving your neighbor as you do yourself. That's a perfect prime example of that. Therefore, I would that ye should know that a sin is anything that is contrary to the plan of happiness that the Father taught unto us in the beginning. And in order for the Father to teach us that His plan was the only plan that we could possibly find this eternal happiness, He commanded that there be times upon the earth when His children are left to themselves and that Satan might have an opportunity to give his plan unto the children of men without the interference of prophets of the Most High and ministrations of the spirit world and the ministrations of the Holy Spirit, which turned the hearts of the children of men from evil to good. And these are the times in between the time at the beginning and the times in the meridian 
of the time of the history of the children of men and the half a time that shall be in the last days of the history of the children of men in this world. Yeah, these are the times of the great wickedness or sin and misery as I have explained it unto you. Or in other words, these are the times that the children of men live contrary to the plan of the Father, and by living contrary to the plan of the Father, they experience great misery and unhappiness among them. And I have already related to you in this record a brief history of many of these peoples that lived upon the earth during the time and the times and also those who lived upon the earth in between these two different time periods. Verse 60 And now I have also explained unto you that the time of my making of this record is near unto the end of the times of which I have spoken, and the time is not yet, but is soon to come that the end of the time shall come, and the beginning of the period of time between the times and the half a time shall commence upon the earth. And I have abridged the words of the brother of Jared concerning this Muhammad, who shall be the last prophet in the dispensation of the times. See, all the all the, all of the um prophets that we hear about, all your religious prophets like Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, you know, all of them, you know, all of them, pretty much all of you, all of you, all of your religious, all of your prophets, your your main ones, okay. Um, who's to say? That the father did not tap these people. Who's to say that he didn't tap these people in their errors, in their time, okay? In their error, when they were upon the earth. Who's to say that the father did not speak to these people, okay? And cause them to write books, all right? But as in what happened to the so called Holy Bible. Is the same thing that happened to all of their records as as well. So your Quran has been altered, okay? Just like the Bible has been altered and corrupted, and good has been, and evil has been intertwined and mixed with good, and same as your your Quran, your Bible, your your other whole your all of your freaking religious texts, okay? It is good intertwined with evil. Evil mixed itself in with the good, okay? And the scriptures have been altered and tampered, okay, by wicked men, all right? And then sold to the entire world by the way of the sword. Christianity being one of the main ones, okay? Christianity has spilled the, the most blood. And then you got Islam like right on the hills of Christianity, an amount of blood spilt upon the earth. And that's your two biggest religions upon the face of the earth today. Okay? This is your two, that's your two biggest religions. The ones that spilt the most blood. That should make you think. That should make you go, hmm. That should make you question something. You know? Goodness sakes. And now I would that ye should know more concerning the beginning of this period known as the times and the other of the holy prophets that Yahushua called at the beginning of this time to teach the plan of the Father unto all those upon the earth. Let me see if I want to read all of it is. It's kind of important, but... Yeah, and this is what, exactly what I just said, too, because, I mean... Like this, it I've it was already in my spirit, bro. Like even though I read this last night, 
it was already in my spirit that religions have been created from the Israelite documents, okay? The Israelite scrolls, all right? Our our records. Um And I don't think it was just the Israelites, you know, because there were some others. See, the Bible does not give us the full, it doesn't give us everything, okay? It is not the infallible word of God. There are so many other records out there that helps to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to be a willing vessel for the spirit of truth to flow through. To put these pieces of the puzzle together to give us a bigger picture. You know. Alright, let's go ahead and continue. Verse 63. For it was at the beginning of this time. Which is the times that Zenos and Zenoch were prepared. And sent to the Israelites at Jerusalem. And of whom Lehi testifieth according to the record of Nephi. And now forgive me because some of these names I cannot pronounce, okay? And I also have mentioned to you of Confusti and Laotis, who were sent unto the people who are the descendants of Benelli and Cain. And these were sent at the beginning of the period known as the times. And it is also important that those of you who shall receive these things in the latter days know of the two other great prophets who were called by Yahusha to administer his word unto the people of the cultures in which they lived. And they were called Guatam, Guatama, who was later called Buddha, and Rishaba. And these were both holy prophets, who taught the people the plan of the Father, having received their instruction and their callings from Yahusha in their own times. And it is expedient that ye shall have mention and it is expedient that ye shall have mention of these because of their influence of the cultures among the children of men, and because of the way in which they are perceived in their latter days. And in the latter days there shall be many religions and diverse churches which preach many forms of these religions, but the main religions of the latter days shall be of those which are based upon the corrupted teachings of these holy prophets that I have mentioned in this record. So you have Jesus Christ, you got Muhammad, which is, you know, the Islam, you got Buddhist, you got Krishna, you got all of these religions, okay? Judaism, okay? Corrupted teachings of these holy prophets. Okay. <clears throat> Behold, these religions shall be known as the Muslim, and the Hindu, and the Buddhist, and the Jew, and the Christian. And from these shall come forth many sects, each teaching, each teaching many different forms of these religions. Can we not look around in the world today and see this? You cannot deny that we can see this, okay? We we can clearly see that these four religions, or five, yeah, there's five, one, two, three, four, five, Muslim, which is Islam, Hindu, Buddhist, Jew, and Christian, okay? Judaism, Christian, all right? And from these shall come forth many sects. Are there not many sects of these religions? Each teaching many different forms of these religions. Is that not happening? And now, these things have been made known unto you, that you might know the mind and the will of the Father concerning all of his children. Not just the Israelites, but all of his children. Okay? All of his children. All flesh and blood beings upon the face of the earth. Okay? 
black, white, yellow, it does not matter. It doesn't matter what, what race you are, what nationality you are, what skin tone you have. If you are alive, you've got the breath of life in your lungs, then you are, you are a child of the Most High, okay? Because He gave you the breath of life. And you can choose, you can freely choose for yourself who you want to serve. Whether you want to serve the power of life and love, or you want to serve the power of death and destruction. It's your choice. <clears throat> Verse 71 again. And now these things I have made known unto you, that you might know the mind and the will of the Father concerning all of his children. Yeah, did not Yahushua call these holy prophets, and give unto them his commandments, and teach unto them his gospel, which is the plan of the Father? And are we not all children of one power, even the creator of our spirits, and the creator who set in motion this system, and order of nature that revolveth around, okay, I'm going to scratch that, I'm talking about revolving around the sun. We don't revolve around the sun, people. The sun revolves around us. Not everything in this sealed portion is correct, okay? There is still some corruption up in here with their heliocentric world view. That's a satanic world view, all right? This geocentric, all right? The earth is the center of attention, all right? Now, the sun was created to give light upon the earth. The earth was not created to revolve around the sun, all right? <sighs> So the sun was created to give life unto the earth in which we live. And it revolves around us. Verse 73. And did not Yahushua say unto his disciples, and did not Yahushua say unto his disciples that he had other sheep which were not of this fold? And that he must bring them also unto the Father by teaching them his gospel. Sorry, people. I know it's been a while, and I need to, I need a, a smoke, and I'm not hiding it. You know, I'm not gonna hide it. I don't, you know, be outright about it. Um, it's been a while. See if I can actually pull this up on my PC so I ain't got to hold this tablet. Seventy-three. I think I'm on. Okay. All right. Did not Yahushua say unto his disciples that he had other sheep which were not of this fold, 
and that he must bring them also unto the Father by teaching them his gospel? Do ye not see what the Father has done for his children in mercy and in patience? Do you not see that he has given unto us his gospel during the times? Okay, hold on. Has given us his gospel during the time and times and half a time? And during these times, were there not at least some of his children who found continual happiness when they followed his plan of happiness for them? And during the times that he withdrew his spirit and left the children of men unto themselves, were not these time periods increased in misery and in turmoil and in wickedness among the children of men? Um, we're living in it right now. I'm living in it right now. During these times, during the times when he withdrew, well, not now, because his, his spirit is back now, but before his spirit was back, like 1990, okay, the year 2000, all right, all the way up until like 2016, 2017, when his spirit came back into the earth. For a reason. People are overlooking it. But it's a reason that his spirit is back in the earth now and is inhabiting his people. Okay? Those of us that are obedient. And it has nothing to do with skin tone this time around. And I already brought out a video about this. Because we're living in the days of... um. <clears throat> Sowing and reaping, okay? Everyone is going to reap what they have sown. Not all Gentiles have sown death, destruction, and murder, okay? And not all Israelites are righteous, okay? There's a whole bunch of self-righteous Israelites out there. Professing a lot of this and that, yet living their lives wickedly, doing polygamy, treating the daughters of Zion like trash, cussing people out, not doing unto others what they would want done unto themselves. They're not keeping the true laws of Yahusha. And many of them are very are still stiff necked and many of them are very rebellious. Therefore, they are going to reap the things that they are sowing and that they have sown. The true elect of the Most High are those that keep and guard his commandments and literally walk in his statutes. Okay. They keep his eternal law. And it has nothing to do with skin color. It has nothing to do with nationality. All right. Um So yeah, we established that uh you know, when his spirit is off the earth, you know, and, there, and, and he, he's, he's about to deliver us. You know, like we're not going to stay in this captivity. Okay? He's, right now, we're, you, you best be thanking the Father that we're here doing this work. Because we're here to save you. We're here to give you this word so that you can make a logical choice who you want to serve. Okay? Because Satan didn't give you a choice. He force fed you. Now, let me continue. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and reread verse 75 because it's important for this to sink in. During the times that he withdrew his spirit 
Four hundred years he had withdrew his spirit, okay? During the great tribulation of the Israelites, okay? During the times that he withdrew his spirit, he turned his face from us, okay? He told us that it was going to happen. He told us he was going to turn his face from us, okay? During the times that he withdrew his spirit and left the children of men unto themselves, were not these time periods increased in misery and in turmoil and in wickedness among the children of men? Yeah, could there be found any righteous and happy people upon the face of the earth during these times? Hell no, in 1990 everybody was partying, everybody was like, I'm going to party like it's 1999, like, you know. Verse 76, Hath not your own history testified unto us that the plan of the Father is the only plan that we can follow if we want to experience joy and happiness forever? Is it not why our Father hath provided the opportunity for us to experience mortality, even that we might prove to ourselves that all of his words are true? And it came to pass that when these great prophets of whom I have made mention died, their followers began to corrupt their teachings, and in many ways changing the pure gospel that was given unto them by these prophets. And after they had corrupted their teachings, they began to teach for doctrines the precepts and commandments of men, mingled with the enlightened words of wisdom given by these prophets. Prophets. And in this way, Satan was able to subvert the plan of the Most High and put in place his own plan, which plan has caused exceedingly misery and pain among the children of men. And now I will give unto you my final words concerning the time and times and half of time. For Yahusha has forbidden me from giving unto you anything further than that which I have given you, and that which I am about to give you concerning these things. For if he truly hath the Spirit to be with you, then ye will know these things. As it was in my spirit already before I read this, okay? For if you truly had the spirit to be with you, then you would know these things. And if you would listen to the prophets who have been sent unto you, then you would know these things. If it so be that you are too weak in the spirit to understand them for yourselves. Behold, after the period of the times has ended, there shall be a great period of time when the Spirit shall not be upon the earth, even a time when no prophets of the Most High shall be called to give the fullness of the gospel to the people of the earth. But at the beginning of the half of time, Shall this first prophet of the latter days, even he who shall be called Joseph, after the name of his father, yea, he shall be called, and shall give unto the world the fullness of the gospel once again. Now this is your Joseph Smith, you know, um, who they have corrupted his writings and his, they've corrupted his stuff too, bro. They corrupted that prophet, okay, because first of all, he was melanated, all right, he was of the seed of Joseph, okay, he was, he, he was, you know, of, of the, either the tribe of Ephraim or something like that, <coughs> <coughs> but they were over in the fourth part. Okay, over in the fourth part. Lehi, Nephi, and all of them were over in the fourth part, okay? And the fourth part is the Americas, all right? 
It was cut off from the rest of the of the continents. All right. It was separated by many waters. All right. So your North, Central, and South America is separated from the three parts. You can clearly look on your map today and see that. All right. The Americas is the fourth part that the Bible in Revelations speak about. Okay. So the beginning of the half of times. Um, that's when Christopher Columbus, that, that was like right before Christopher Columbus had came over. Now, he was given the fullness of the gospel once again, okay? And, and Christopher Columbus came over, he took over these lands, the worst of the heathen, and they basically stamped out the truth. Okay, and they took all of these writings and corrupted them and gave them back to the world and spread by way of the sword. Okay, now your Mormon religion has twisted and distorted a lot of things and have downtrodden, you know, the original people. Okay, of what the, the book was, who the book was written by and about. Okay, they want to call so called black skin a curse. All right. There's a lot of corruption within the Book of Mormon. I get why people want to throw it out, but you know, you you're doing exactly what what the enemy wants you to do. You know, that's the reason why they put that in there so that you simple-minded people would just throw out the whole baby in the bath water. You don't want to empty the muddy waters. You don't want to empty the the dirty water and then save the baby. No, you you're like no, kill the baby along with the water. Like what's wrong with you? You know, use some, use your, use your, your common sense that the father freely gave to you. You know, you don't want to throw out the whole book, you know, read it and absorb that which is good and throw out the bad. Okay. Empty the, empty the dirty water, save the baby. Okay. Now verse 85. All right. I'm only going to finish. I'm going to read the rest of this chapter. All right. And we're going to wrap it up after that. Um, verse 85. And in the meridian of the half of times shall this final prophet be called forth to establish the truth of the first and take away all the stumbling blocks that have been put in place by Yahusha because of the wickedness of men. And he shall be called Christopher, being a bearer of Christ, and shall be he who shall bring forth this record unto you. And this record shall be the final written revelation given by the Father to prepare the world for the coming of the Messiah in the glory of the Father. And the Messiah shall come at the end of the half of time. Now, we are in the half of half of times, people. Just think about that. We are literally in the half of half of times, okay? So, <laughs> and he is rosen up his final prophets, okay? Now, we don't call ourselves prophets. I would never call myself a prophet. I'm a servant here to do the will of my father, okay, and fulfill my purpose upon this earth. Now, the Messiah shall come at the end of the half a time, and at this time there shall be no more need of prophets or scriptures or holy men to teach the fullness of the gospel to the world, for the Messiah shall reign supreme. And he shall throw down all the governments and the religions of the world, which have been set up according to the precepts and commandments of men, which are wicked. And Yahusha shall cause to be set up the final government of the Most High, which shall be established according to the plan of the Father. And now... It is expedient that ye should know the times of Satan and his power, that ye might realize that the Father has given Lucifer, who is Satan according to the Spirit, a fair opportunity to show forth his plan upon the earth. And since the beginning of time, 
Satan has been trying to win over the hearts of the children of men to his plan and turn their hearts from the plan of the Father. And he has done this through the ministrations of the spirit world where he resideth with those who follow him as I have already explained it unto you. But in all the time periods of the earth, Yahusha has forbidden Satan from using all of his knowledge of the power of the Most High, which is the ability to understand the laws of nature and to control them to bring happiness to the children of the Most High. And part of the argument of Lucifer is that all of the children of the Most High should have the privilege to become like their father and have his power so that they can give themselves this happiness. But the plan of the Father does not allow those who are terrestrial or telestial spirits to have this power. And this he forbiddeth because of that which these spirits would do with this power. But Lucifer disagreeth. Okay, hold on. But Lucifer disagreeth with the Father, and maintaineth that all the children of the Most High should have the same opportunity to enjoy all the benefits of being an exalted being like unto the Father in all things. And in the beginning, even as a spirit, Lucifer argued this point successfully because none of the children of the Most High had yet experienced the effects of the flesh in their spirits. Okay? Let me reread that so that it can sink in. And in the beginning, even as a spirit, Lucifer argued this point successfully because none of the children of the Most High had yet experienced the effects of the flesh on their spirits. And the Father knew that those who had chosen for themselves those glories in His kingdoms where they did not serve others but were served themselves forever, could not have his powers and knowledge bestowed upon them, because they would misuse these powers and destroy themselves and create imbalance and chaos in his kingdoms. Okay? This is exactly what the earth has become. Okay? The Father allowed it, and I'm going to get to it, okay? We're going to get to it. We're going to get to why the Father allowed the earth to become what it is today. Okay? Nevertheless, because none of his children had experienced mortality when we were all spirit beings. Okay? Remember, we were spirit before we came into mortality. Alright? Nevertheless, because none of his children had experienced mortality or the effects of the flesh, as I have mentioned, there was no way that he could convince Lucifer or those who followed him, nor could any of us know for surety until we experienced the effects of the flesh firsthand, as was provided in the plan of the Father from the beginning. But during the times of the earth, when Satan went to and fro upon the earth, deceiving the children of men and turning them from the Most High to his plan, he was forbidden by the Father to give much knowledge of the powers of the Most High unto them. And this the Father forbade, because he knew that with this knowledge the children of men would destroy themselves. Nevertheless, this is verse 100, Nevertheless, 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 so that none of his children would question the exactness of his plan and the wisdom of it, 
Because the Father is all love, baby. The Father is all good. He is all good, all merciful. The truth does not need to be defended. Let it loose and it shall defend itself. The Father is not a dictator, okay? He gave us the choice to freely choose, okay? And he's going to allow Lucifer his time, all right? Nevertheless, so that none of his children would question the exactness of his plan and the wisdom of it, the Father shall allow Satan to have complete control over the hearts of the children of men during the half of time during the latter days, while at the same time allowing the Spirit and the Holy Order of the Son to dwell with those who choose to do the will of the Most High. Okay? This is happening right now. <clears throat> As we speak. Today. Okay, so right now we're in the half times. We're in the half times, all right? And um, right now, Satan has deceived the hearts of many men, okay? And at the same time, the spirit of the Hamashiach is dwelling with those of us who have chosen to do the will of the Most High. And at that time, he shall be allowed to give unto the children of men some of the knowledge of the Most High and the understanding of the laws of nature, so that they may use these laws according to the dictates of their own wills and pleasures. And of these things I shall make an account later in this record. And we definitely going to get that, people, but not tonight. And now I end my words, which I have been commanded to give unto you concerning the time and times and half a time, which have been spoken of and written of by the holy prophets. Okay, so um, this is going to be long enough, so I'm not going to drive this out. Plus, I haven't even gotten into verse 68. I mean, I'm sorry, chapter 68 yet. And uh, I'm I'm gonna be getting into that as soon as I get off here, and I'm gonna do my reading and go to bed. It's 11:30 uh, p.m. my time, and it's 5:21 of 2022. Shalom.